when we traveled abroad and I got to get on foreign soil and see how sport is done in a different country, it was an eye opener to me. And one thing I learned about is something called football academies. Yeah. Where young athletes are basically groomed from a young age to play professional sport. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there really is no such thing as kind of high school sports or amateurism. If it, The community may identify you at 13 years old as somebody with, with uh, potential, and they'll send you to these academies. Yeah. And I remember when I came back, I started doing some research, and I wrote about one in France. INF Claire Fontaine. You familiar with that place, Dr. Yeah, Says? Yeah, Claire Fontaine, yeah. What can you tell us about these academies like Claire Fontaine? Like, wh what goes on there, and how does that differ from how these footballers are raised in America? So the there's lots of interesting points around this topic, I mm -hmm. think, that are relevant. Go for it. Relevant to our discussion. The, so Claire Fontaine is the French National Federation headquarters mm -hmm. and training center. There's training pitches there, locker rooms, canteens, hotels, etc. Um, the vast majority of quote-unquote advanced football nations have them. England have St. George's Park. Wales have Dragon Park. Um, we visited Amsterdam's, uh, the Netherlands are... Uh Yes, Home. at KMVB campus. Yeah, yeah, we visited that one. So that's that's exactly right. That's the Netherlands equivalent. Mm -hmm. Germany has one. Um, Italy has one. So so they, those are the headquarters of the of the national federation. So all the youth national teams and senior national teams will um, will will train there. Will uh, the youth teams will play there? Probably the senior mm -hmm. teams obviously play in, in the in massive stadiums around the country. Some countries have a, a specifically designated home stadium, like Wembley Stadium in England. Um, some countries will move the national team games around so fans in different parts of the country can can have the the, the privilege of attending. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Germany being an example there. So so um, them the. Their objective, their objectives are, are multiple. There are several objectives of, of those national team training centers. Um, as I say, developing youth national teams yes. and national team players, hosting coach education courses so they can develop the standard of coaching in the country for all the coaches that work with players from the, the, very, the, the most basic grass. So it kind of be like a universal from the, from the top and training the coaches so they can go out in the communities and yeah. so to kind of uplift the whole standard of football around the country. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, so that would be some of the key purposes of those types of, of, um, of centers. Yes. When we say academies, you're typically referring to the academies of professional clubs, okay. which we, we visited um, Ajax in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. um, fantastic academy. Uh, several Dutch clubs are, are very well renowned, renowned for de developing youth players. The, the, the standard of football in Holland uh, and the quality of some of their most elite players that they've produced relative to their population is quite outstanding. Mm -hmm. Similarly in Belgium next door. Um, uh, and as you described, the academies, the purpose of the academies is to identify young players, bring them into the academy, and then, and then work with them on a daily basis. They're getting professional training yeah. at a young age. Wonderful facilities. What's a day like for them? Because they're still doing schoolwork also. That, they, they are doing schoolwork also, which has been a more recent development mm -hmm. because I'm going back decades now, but when, when clubs had... Youth teams, the, the concept of an academy is a fairly recent um, description or label. But prior to quote unquote academies, they still had youth teams. Right. Um, and then there was the, an overhaul and the introduction of academies. And, and as you say, the, the, the concept was identify the players at a young age, bring them into the academy, and train them up through the age groups um, along that professional path so to speak yes. that professional line so there'll be you know hopefully either full professionals that will play for that club or or, or professional players that they can sell to other clubs right. um the education was only added to that after the start of the academies okay. because 
and, and again, this is a this is a fascinating contrast between the United States and Europe, South America, some of the other countries. That Dr. Say is when I saw this model, it explained to me why America is far behind. Right. Their young athletes are identified from young, and they're getting professional training. They're getting meals. They're housed. They're safe. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. The, no, we, no. We, you, that's why we're behind. When yeah. I saw that <laughs> firsthand, Dr. Say, I'm like, oh snap. Yeah. That's why we're not qualifying for World Cup. Right. The. Uh, the so there's an element of truth to that the um we they do have that now the mls clubs have academies now mm -hmm. um they're not not all of them are complete academies right for example nashville is a fairly new addition to, to mls mm -hmm. an expansion team within the last couple of years they only have youth teams at certain age groups are still considered their academy right. but they don't have a team at every age group other teams in mls have had academies for much longer and they will have teams at every age group um but again relative to population i think that the number of mls clubs is in the in the 30s mm -hmm. as i mentioned earlier in, in england england and wales there are 92 professional clubs that doesn't include scotland mm -hmm. and doesn't include ireland um so compared to more traditional soccer countries should we say the the number of clubs is less right so the number of academy places is less um, but there is what does exist in America is a massive club system, mm -hmm. so to speak, a club soccer system. And there are clubs now that exist in America that have grown into these sort of behemoth clubs with lots of players, lots of teams, lots of coaches. Um, problem, or key issue is it takes money to run those clubs and yes. clubs of that size. You've got to pay the coaches. You've mm -hmm. got to uh, upkeep the facilities. And, and, and these clubs are, you know, want to provide a high standard to their players. But that results in fees for players and families. And again, because America is so vast, mm -hmm. there is a heavy travel commitment and a, and a heavy travel cost involved with playing for, for these big youth clubs. Um, well, why are the families being asked to fit this budget? In the in the international models, everything is taken care of by the big club or the country. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The clubs or the countries pay pay the majority of that. Yeah, or all of that. Yeah. So why in America again? Why in America are the families asked to, uh, I guess, carry the cost for the travel and and the training and stuff? So then, just to clarify, they're not at the MLS clubs. Okay. Atlanta United, Nashville SC, Los Angeles Galaxy. Mm -hmm. All the MLS clubs that have academies do pay for They the pay players. for, okay. I'm talking now about the youth club system. Mm -hmm. So all the, the clubs in America that exist for players up to U18 or U19, that then when they leave that, they go into the college system or perhaps into the professional system. Why so doesn't the national clubs, team, the national, U.S. soccer, uh, invest in taking care of these individuals? They do. They do invest. Yeah. They, do, they invest and they support. Um, but there's just so... There are so many of them. Okay. There's so many players, which is good. It's good that yeah. so many players want to play. Um, and it's good that there are lots of playing options for them. Right. Um, but, and, and U.S. does support that. U.S. soccer does support that to, mm -hmm. the, uh, to a good extent, to the best of their ability. Um, but that beca because there's so many it's impossible to completely fund all of that. Right. So now it becomes a model where the players and the families have to fund it. Um, but what that has done has created what's known as a pay-to-play model. Right. So to participate now in youth soccer at a high level, if you're not at one of the professional academies, again, of which there's only 30-something right. compared to other countries where there's a lot more, which is purely just down to the number of professional mm -hmm. clubs that exist. There are less professional clubs that exist in America compared to other countries. The pay-to-play -play model is a result of that, mm -hmm. which now means to play at that level, to play in those clubs, there's a significant cost to families. Mm -hmm. And that can rule a lot of players out. For sure. I can't afford to participate. You can price out a lot of our athletes. Particularly in the inner cities. Mm -hmm. So that filters that then to the national team because there's some, some extremely talented athletes all over America. Um, but those that grow up in poorer neighborhoods, perhaps some of the inner cities, some of them even some more remotely rural places yeah. as well, don't have the option to play in that way. Yeah. And so they 
inevitably choose another sport. Yeah. There's a, a lot of street basketball opportunities, as you say, and, 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 and things of that nature. Yeah. So, so I, I do think America misses out on a lot of talented athletes that at that very young age where, um, as we talked about earlier, right. in other countries where soccer is by far and away the number one sport, it's mm -hmm. not even close. Here, there are so many choices. You know, foot, American football is very popular. Basketball is very popular. Baseball is very popular. Hockey's up there. Mm -hmm. Soccer's on that. It, soccer is extremely popular. There are lots of young players playing, but there's still lots of choices for young athletes in America. In other countries, that's not the case. Football soccer way out in front rugby yeah. and cricket for example in, in britain and other and some other countries would, would be would be not even close behind it really right. but but um but still there is an option but because the options are less and you're exposed to football at every turn and at such a young age the majority of athletes will turn to that sport right. in those countries in america that doesn't necessarily happen no. so so I, there are some areas of America and some demographics of American youth that don't have the same opportunities to participate and play mm -hmm. in soccer at the entry level and then all the way up that others do. Right. So that there are athletes that the game misses out on mm -hmm. because of that, because they, they don't have the means to participate and ultimately choose another path. Right. But I, I, when I, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because, again, when I when I saw these academy models, I was truly impressed by it. Because there are so many kids in the inner cities who try to compete. They get priced out of different sports and they end up losing their way, you know, because they just can't uh, keep up.